is Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Bank here on the Voice of Indiana County, WCCS 101.1 FM and AM 1160. It's time now for one of our interview segments presented and protected by Marcus and Mac, a law firm representing injured people. The holiday season can really bring out some stressful issues, and of course that will affect mental health in more ways than one. And also with COVID-19, it's probably compounded things even further. Joining us now is Dr. Ralph May. Dr. May, it is great to talk to you once again here on Indiana in the Morning. Thanks for having me again, Todd. Oh, this is Josh, actually, Dr. May. Josh. Yeah. Sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I got over the over the phone. It's hard to distinguish you guys. You have radio voice. Well, <laughs> the the curse of our business, I guess. Yeah. Yeah. But let's talk about uh, how things do kind of stack up. I mean, the holiday season, I think, presents its own its own problems when it comes to mental health issues. It seems like things are compounded because of the holiday season, the expectations that are put on it. So under normal circumstances, it's stressful enough, right? Correct. And I, under the normal circumstances, I think that the holiday season, really we create our problems with it because we turned it into a stressful time where we think we have to have some kind of you know, specialness, we have to force the specialness. We have to buy extra stuff. We have to do extra stuff. We, we compound the, the spirit of the season by trying to turn it into something that's far more mu- about stuff than it is about people, than it is about our time together with people, our, our, na- our natural ability to connect with one another and find very positives with one another. And that's really what the holiday season is supposed to be about. It's a, a deeply spiritual connection with one another and, and with, with our ability to really share what's important. And there's always pressure associated with the, you know, we have to buy the right thing, find the right gift, have enough time, and that pressure always is present. Now, this year with COVID, there's an extra special kind of slant put in this because we really want now that special time with our families. We want those special traditions. I I was uh, hearing an article that, uh, seeing a, a media story that Christmas tree sales are up dramatically this year because people want to have that traditional family oriented. Christmas season, mm-hmm. and COVID has thrown a monkey wrench into some of that because of our, our need to physically distance, not social distance, Remind I remind people, physical distance. You can physically distance without being socially distant, and that's an important concept. Well, that's definitely right about that. So COVID-19, as you mentioned, being physically distant from one another, it kind of removes that, sometimes it removes the ability for people to make those connections, to make the holiday season uh, a bit better for themselves, whether it be talking with friends and family or uh, talking with the people that that can help them out in certain situations? Well, people want to get together. They want to have the, the family meetings. They want that close physical connection. People want to hug one another. I mean, I think that's one of the most powerful things that, that we're missing right now is that physical contact, that hugging, that close social bond that, that we're missing right now because of, the, because of the restrictions associated with the virus. I mean, you don't want to physically connect with someone and hug them and then end up they get sick. Uh, so it, it creates this extra special stress. So people are getting creative. I like what I'm seeing in terms of, you know, using Zoom to have family gatherings, uh, using using some physical distancing and family gatherings, small family groups where there's physical distancing. There's creative ways to still stay connected with one another, which is really, really important. What I'm afraid of as the, as the pandemic extends itself, as we have pandemic fatigue and the, pandemic fatigue is so obvious as as the months drag on here Mm -hmm. that the people become frustrated naturally frustrated like i'm tired of this i want to come and so we let our guard down you know and we're and and this is a marathon that is getting through the rolling stress of the pandemic is a marathon we're on mile 20 i mean the finish line we've got a lot of this done the finish lines in the future with the with the vaccination system hopefully within a few months spring by summer We'll be able to restore a, a semblance of normalcy, mm-hmm. but but we've got this extra ex, we've got this gap now where people are so desperate to reconnect, where that's a dangerous thing right now, particularly right now, and so we have to remind ourselves this will be over that we will get through this. But the finish line is in, is in sight. We don't want to quit our, our measures now that we protect each other, but we want to connect with each other, and so we got to creatively find ways to to restore and sustain that social connection, that important love connection that we have with one another that helps us. 
I think, though, to that note, uh, Zoom chats and uh, Skype and video chatting in that regard has definitely been a great tool for that. And, of course, just calling somebody up on the phone to tell to talk with them or writing them a, an email or a letter. What are some other things that people can do, I guess, to kind of strengthen those those bonds? Well, I, I think one of the things that, you know, and people, I'm a big believer in exercise. Now, that doesn't mean you have to run a marathon, but right. being out and walking, being outside with one another, you can go outside with one another if you're physically able. And you can walk. You can be out in nature. You can walk down Philadelphia Street with one another as long as you're not, you know, when you're outside, you know, you can wear a mask. You're, you, the risk of exposure is much less. And you're getting outside. You're getting, by the way, exposure to natural sunlight, even when it's cloudy. The exposure to natural sunlight is so important to regulate our sleep and regulate our mood. So that being out, one of the things I do is I get out and I run and I walk. I mean, to be outside, even when it's cold, unless it's really bad weather, of course, is really an important simple step you can take. And, and maintaining a structure also. Mm-hmm. Ma- make sure that you're not just, you know, getting yourself lost in days. Like some t- sometimes during COVID, people are like, I can't know what day of the week it is. My structure has been disrupted. I'm yeah. not sleeping right. Getting a structure for yourself, you know, it doesn't have to be rigid, but get the day structured so you have activities every day to keep your mind focused. Right, so that the days don't start running together then. In that exactly, case. exactly. When they start running together, then you get confused. Then your sleep gets disturbed. And I, and I can't say enough about sleep, by the way, that we rely on a, a fairly regular sleep schedule to maintain our mood, to maintain our health. I mean, research shows when your sleep is disrupted continuously, depression, anxiety, irritability, but also heart disease, hypertension, physical Mm -hmm. illness can result when your sleep is constantly disrupted. So having a regular sleep schedule, even though it might be challenging, is really, really important self-care during this time, Josh. Right. But also, I think there's a detrimental effect to too much sleep, too, isn't there? Well, if you hibernate, I mean, if you just, if you sleep constantly, that will wear you down as well. Oversleeping and not staying active enough is an indication of depression. If you're constantly sleeping and becoming more unmotivated, and then people who are like that, it's it's actually called hibernation syndrome, like you think of a bear in the wintertime, where you eat too much, you sleep too much, Mm -hmm. you become inactive, and that's associated with depression and also very poor health outcomes, heart disease in particular. So you have to maintain this balance between activity and structure and the expense of energy and regular sleep in order to make, and that's something you have control over. That's something you have control over. Also, I want to say something about, about COVID too, is that one of the things that I've talked about with people, it's very important is that I used to hear from people all the time. I don't have enough time for my kids. I don't mm-hmm. have time for my family, work, 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 work. Well, COVID in many ways gives you more time with your family, gives you more time. You know, even if it's frustrating time, if you're teaching your kids, it's on, you know, it's remote learning, you've got more but still, it's time with the family to create some new rituals, some new structures, some, some new activities together so that you can have and use this time effectively with one another. Because before, maybe you were too busy. Maybe the world was just too crazy and too busy then. So try to find something that comes out of COVID that's not all bad, something positive that you can learn about yourself and your family that you can apply and sustain even after the pandemic is over and we return to fairly normal functioning. We're talking with Dr. Ralph May this morning about uh, mental health during the holidays, of course, being compounded by COVID-19. Dr. May, sometimes I guess uh, it may be hard for people to hear the message of, hey, things are going to be okay just around the corner or or something along those lines. What can the average John, John Doe or Jane Doe do to help out somebody who they feel is going through some of these Mental, Ill, mental health issues that can really help the, help the other person in the, on the other end of the line? One of the, one of the most important things that we need to share right now is our sense of social responsibility for one another. I know that there's a lot of discussion about personal freedoms being restricted because of the pandemic, and I hear that. But we, the other side of this is social responsibility. The, the statement we use often with our military that we, we toss around, freedom isn't free. This concept right. that we have a social responsibility to one another. And when somebody's struggling, we want to be human. We want to be compassionate. We want to take care of one another. That's fundamentally our best. COVID can bring out the worst in people and the best in people. I like to see the best in people. I like to see that when somebody is struggling, we say, hey, it looks like you're having a hard time. 
Don't be afraid to reach out. Don't be afraid to support one another. It's, it's basic human kindness. Really, it's not that complicated. Psychologist or not, it's not that complicated. It's basic human kindness. We need that now more than ever. So being kind, I guess I guess those measure those those messages from Mr. Rogers pay off. Be kind. <laughs> Be kind and, and seek out the helpers. And by the way, Josh, I'm most I'm very worried about our medical helpers. Mm-hmm. They're taking a real beating right now. They're they're it's for, for, as far as I'm concerned, it's like combat. Yeah. They're day in and day out on the front line fighting this deadly virus being with people who are really suffering, and they're separated from their families because of the physical distancing restrictions. Yeah. And so I, I worry about our, our health care providers and the, because they're going back in every day, every day, every day, mm-hmm. shift after shift after shift. And, you know, some of them are getting sick, and some of them are getting really sick, and yet they keep, they keep going back. I can't say enough about the effort. And I'm worried next year when this clears and we clear this virus, we're really going to need to pay some attention to people who have really – had to put a lid on it and had to struggle through this all the way. And there could be some rebound effects next year that, that me and the mental health community and all of us are going to have to pay attention to to make sure that the supports for our people who have really stretched themselves are strong and in place as we get through this. Because right now, they're in the middle of the battle. The old expression is you can't worry about draining the swamp when you're up to your butt in alligators. And that's kind of what's happening right yeah, now. Is yeah. People are just getting through each day doing what they got to do. And God bless them. They're doing a good job. Uh-huh. But, but we've got to, we've got to think about the long-term effects of this. So not just now and getting through, but on the other side of this. So on the other side of this, people could probably, the, the first thing that popped into my mind was PTSD, post-traumatic stress disorder. There will be a certain number of people. Now, not everyone, but there's right. going to be a certain number of people with PTSD that come out of this. I, I, I was, I was thinking back to when I started in the profession, Josh, you know, back in the, the late 70s, mm-hmm. and we had a lot of Vietnam veterans returning, and they were, they were starting to have PTSD after a number of years. And, and I think we're going to see an increase in PTSD in, in the frontline people in particular who have had to go in day in and day out and fight this battle. And I, wanna, I, I don't want to wait for that to show up. I want to send the message. And if you know health care providers, you, you're married to health care providers, you are a health care provider. Take care of yourself. Support one another. Don't neglect yourselves. Make sure you have ways of, of decompressing and supporting yourselves and one another because they're cut off from their families. They're cut off from their supports, too, mm-hmm. and, and just right in, day in and day out. So I want to make sure that the message gets out there, that we're all in this together, and it's not just about getting through the virus. It's afterwards we will be there and we will do what we need to do to make sure people recover. And definitely the people who have been on the front lines definitely deserve that treatment and that support as well. Uh, Dr. May, we're just up at the mark, but I do want to thank you very much for joining us this morning. This has been very insightful, and uh, please come back again. Oh, Whenever you ask me, I'll come, Josh. Thank you so much. Thanks again to Dr. Ralph May joining us this morning on Indiana in the Morning, presented by First Commonwealth Banker, interviews presented by Marcus and Mack, a law firm representing injured people. Representing injured people. Representing 